The Royal Court Theatre in London has a long history of launching new playwrights. It's the playhouse that took a chance on John Osborne in 1956, initiating the so-called Angry Young Men School of Writing. Over the years, they've premiered groundbreaking works by artists such as Sarah Kane and Mark Ravenhill and have been home to directors such as Stephen Daldry and Danny Boyle, gaining the theatre national and international significance. But in recent months, they've produced an extraordinary wave of commercial successes from first-time writers. BBC Arts editor Will Gompertz went to find out how they're doing it, and of course there's a bit of strong language along the way. From time to time, there's a moment in the arts that changes the status quo. It happened here in the 1950s when John Osborne wrote, Look Back in Anger. And do you know what? I think it's happening here again. To introduce myself. Meet the team, producing the dramatists, who are part of a bold new wave of young British playwrights. A college dropout turned overnight sensation, a housing officer who won an Olivier Award, a non theatre goer who's now a prize winning playwright, and a schoolgirl whose first play opens at the Royal Court this month. There's a torrent of textual talent flowing from the Royal Court's 12-week-long indoctrination-come-masterclass called the Young Writers' Programme. So, how does it work? You pitch up terrified on day one, or certainly I did, um, and it's a 90-minute session in the evening with a tutor who is a working playwright. And you start off learning about all different aspects of playwriting, from creating characters to structuring a play. And by the end of the course, you're sort of homing in on an idea that you have, that you want to write. The bloke shouts out, you've got any change, mate? And I said, I'm really sorry, I've only got notes. They less taught you so much as showed you, you know? We, we read a lot of plays together and we'd talk about them. They gave you kind of exercises to do, write little sketches, and I think that was the thing that was so helpful. Because when you first write dialogue, it's really weird. You go on. It just feels really fake. You're like, this is odd, doing this. But after doing a few of those sketches, you get over the initial weirdness. She top herself or get better. And let me guess, what you'd prefer? You made your choice to stay, Henry, and I made mine to leave. Polly Stenham joined the Young Writers' Programme as a teenager and wrote a play called That Face. The Royal Court liked it a lot. So onto their stage it went and ended up transferring to the West End and then being produced worldwide. Not to use a phrase like she starts it. Now they're backing 18-year-old Annie Arise in her first play, Spur of the Moment. She divides her time between attending rehearsals and studying for her A-levels. Do you feel like a schoolgirl or a playwright? Uh, I feel like neither, actually. I feel like... At school, everything seems a little bit less significant because I've got a play on, so I'm a playwright. But then I think that I shouldn't be worrying about the play because I've got much more important things to think about because I'm actually a schoolgirl, you know? And so I think it makes you not really worry about anything, which is probably a very bad state when I then fail on my A-levels. <laughs> a notable trait of the Royal Court's approach is their relentless pursuit of new talent. If you're a good catch, they tend not to let go. I walked in thinking, I'm never going to have an idea again. It's pointless me being here. Why did you think that at that time? Why, were you, why did you feel... Because I thought I was, I'm good at writing dialogue, but I've got no stories ever, okay. so I'm useless. Mm -hmm. and, and they asked me to go on it, and I sent an email saying, you don't want me, you've got, you've got this all wrong. Um, and then she said, no, come along, just give it a go a few times, maybe you'll think of something. And then the guy that ran it, the first exercise he did was write about home. Royal Court Literary Office. That guy was the playwright Leo Butler, another graduate of the Young Writers' Programme. So this is where it all happens, is it, Leo? This is the new he now runs the course. He is clear uh, that to find quality, you here. have to have quantity. Uh, the Royal Court gets about 3,000 plays per year. 3,000? This is just a small section of that. And, and all, all the plays get read. How unusual is it not to have 3,000 plays, but to have them, have them all read? I think it's very unusual. Um, there are the theatres around who do read uh, unsolicited plays, but not very many. Certainly not in the quantity that, the w that we take. You're not remotely prescriptive. They come up with a play which requires a, a cast of 300. So be it. Yeah, absolutely. Apart from the plays being contemporary, we're not asking for a certain type of play. He's so hot. 
Oh, shh. He'll hear you. You're so hot! Oh, shut <laughs> up! <laughs> I don't think he's hot. Have you ever met him? You showed me him on Facebook. Anya's play is certainly contemporary. It's about the what-ifs of her own life. It tells a story of a 12-year-old daughter of a warring middle-aged couple who takes her flirty relationship with Daniel, the streetwise lodger, a bit too far. You want to fuck forever? Oh, no, you don't I don't. Like... Shut up! What did the casting experience feel like? That must have been exciting. That was the most fantastic experience yeah, I've ever had. They come in, they have a talk about the part, which is always the weirdest thing, I think, because they start treating the characters like they're real, and it's like, well, actually, I wrote that in my bedroom. That's, that, they're not a real person. You yeah. are aware of this, yeah. aren't you? Yeah, I think he's got a status yeah. over her because yeah. he's the one that can make her look cool. Dominic yeah. Cook, the Royal Court's artistic yeah. director yeah. since 2006, yeah. inherited the Young Writers' Programme, yeah. but he raised the stakes. <laughs> If a student's play was good enough, it would go straight into production. He wanted hits for his theatre. We're not an educational organisation, we're, we're not social workers. I wanted to make it more clearly and definitely about finding plays to produce. And I know that sounds obvious, but in a way, when you're working with young people, there's always a tendency to be inclusive, nurturing, to put that first. The most I've ever learnt from playwriting is... Um, when, it's, when it's about to go on and you're making all the crazy changes and it's just really, really tricky. I think you only really learn that stuff with almost a bit of a gun to your head. Because I see what you mean, that's a little bit... It just feels that, it's, that he's, he's pushing, that he's pushing it, it yeah. a little bit. That's just the only little question mark around it. There's some, let's think about it, because it's an easy fix. The Royal Court's success with new writers is part of a nationwide trend. In the late 1980s, new plays accounted for just 7% of all UK production. Today, that figure is 42%. That's a five-fold increase. There has been a boom in new writing, generally, throughout the culture, and I think the reason is very simple. Subsidy. There has been more money pumped into the arts, generally, and theatre specifically, over the last 12 years. The Royal Court has used some of that additional funding to actively seek out ethnic voices. I'm glad the Royal Court found me, because they pretty much have said, you know, write what you want to write, you're a writer. I think maybe with certain other institutions, they do think, oh, wow, female, Asian, Muslim, this is brilliant, tick, 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 and um, they would like me to write Asian stories. I do think in some ways the court sets the agenda and people follow. Oh, no. What? Over there. Seriously checking you out? Yoda. Producing I plays from the Young Writers' Programme loses yeah, money. You know you as for the playwrights, well, most of them have other jobs. And if the expected oh. government cuts oh. come this autumn, it's well, these I'm, productions I'm that will be most vulnerable. But there's another threat. Please. Artistic Save focus. With a big man What's vital, I think, is they go on and write the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh play, rather than get sidetracked into uh, film or television. And the court has to say, come on, come on, come on. They've got to nag them for the next play. The young playwrights I spoke to all wanted to try their hand at either a movie, a book or a TV drama. But if there's one thing that will keep them within theatre, it's a sense of community here. Once you're in the Royal Court, you're in the Royal Court. It's not, I, don't, I mean, it's not a course where that's it, you've done 12 weeks now, go away. You can come here anytime and you could speak to anybody in, in the different departments and, and they can help you develop your idea or read through a play and give you feedback on a play. It, you, it's, it's home. For me, it's home. Most of the young writers I spoke to said they felt like frauds, that they weren't proper playwrights. But maybe that's the secret behind this theatre's success. The power of this new generation lies not just in its breadth of voices, but also in the freedom they've been given to write what they want, how they want.